Hey, it's Luke. So I was at an event over the weekend, uh, and there was an Ableton brand manager there. And uh, between having some chats with him and uh, his demo, I learned a whole bunch of really interesting things you could do in Ableton Live that I didn't know even after all these years. So uh, yeah, here are five of them. And I always hate when people do this, but stick around for number five if you want to find a new way to make some interesting sounds. All right, the first thing that I've been really excited to try out is sort by rank. And he was saying that you can do this where you go into the column where, the, where you've got the column name up here. You don't go where your effects are, but at the top. And there you go. You can right click and then you have you can add the rank column to it. So when we add rank, it will actually tell you which plugins you use the most. I was hoping it worked with the third party plugins as well. It doesn't seem to, it seems to be with Ableton devices, but still um, what I've been doing for devices I use really often is I've been, actually you can tell here, there's a, I, I've been putting a red dot. So I've been using the favorites one for the most used and then the the, uh, the orange one, number two, for ones that I use pretty often or whatever. Um, but by using it by rank, the interesting thing is you always have the your most used plugins uh, at the top. So you're able to just drop them in. But what he was saying, which is interesting too, is you can click on it again and go the other way and have the ones that you've used the least. And it turns out there's a bunch of these that I haven't used yet on, on this computer. <laughs> um, so I might have to play around with some of these. I have used the Convolution Reverb, so I'm not sure why. Oh, there we go. Yeah, because I've been using Convolution Reverb Pro. But anyways, so you can tell which plugins or which uh, effects and devices that you haven't used in a while. And uh, I'm wondering if it works here with the instruments as well. We'll do the same thing. So you right click, hit rank. There you go. So we can so we can order it by rank here. So obviously, I, uh, yeah, I'm using the drum rack the most, simpler. This all makes sense. Wavetable sort of surprises me because I don't use it that much but i use it once in a while um and uh yeah drift which i think is going to be moving up in the ranks in the next little while and uh, a bunch of these that i realized i haven't used in uh in uh, the last uh little while so um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna have to go through and have some some fun with the uh, operator because i i love that synth but i tend to forget it's there sometimes. So that's a great way to easily find the things that you use really often and a great way to find some stuff that you haven't used in a while. So number two is something that I was asking him specifically about. It's how to randomize uh, knobs on any plugin really. And he showed me this great trick that's actually really easy. So you can take whatever you want. I used Serum here and you can just hit group and over here on the first button here, you've got the macros. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna map stuff. So you basically figure out which which knobs you'd wanna move and you just move a whole bunch of them. You, you've got a bunch here. And then I think, and then you can map each of these by pressing them, pressing map. You can do it a little bit randomly. It doesn't really matter what you're doing here. And um, so, sorry, that was a little bit loud. <laughs> so uh, here, we'll just throw an extra oscillator on here. We'll remove the mapping. Um, and we'll just bring this down a little bit. And uh, we'll do this. A little bit of release just to make it sound a little bit more natural. So this button here at the bottom, if we hit random, it's changing it. Every time you press it, it's changing all of these knobs that I pressed earlier that we set up a macro for. And every time we have it, we have a different random. The only thing, what I should have done on here and I didn't, um, I should have put a limiter at the end of this because things can get loud. So always limit <laughs> limit the signal going out of it. Uh, you never know what's gonna come out of it, especially if you're doing random stuff. It's not too bad with, with the ones I chose here, but anytime you're hitting, if you were to hit the this master volume or something like that, you might get some really, really loud, 
loud thing. So just just hit a limiter at the top, at, at the end. Also, what he was saying is um, it might cause some issues with CPU on some plugins. Some plugins aren't really ready to work with all you know stuff changing too quickly or or whatever. Um, so yeah, that that might be a an issue if you're on an older computer or, or something. But yeah, you just hit this random button as often as you want, and you can make changes. You can just you know remap this take the attack button or whatever and then map this to maybe this one here and then every time we're randomizing it we're getting a different see all of a sudden it's almost like a pad so this is a great trick this is going to be so useful uh for so many things and as he mentioned too you can get more than 16 uh 16 macros you can get uh, or uh, more than the, the eight, you can get up to 16. I think, it, yeah, there we go. Um, so you can map a whole bunch of stuff. You can map a few different knobs to one of these macros. You can do a whole bunch of stuff once you start playing around with it and come up with some really interesting sounds that you might not have found by just moving stuff around um, because you're basically moving 16 or, or more knobs all at the same time. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it, it can make some really interesting sounds and uh, I'm, Loving just what I'm hearing now, so I'm going to be using this a lot now. So number three is something that he was super excited about, and I think it's got tons of potential. I just have to wrap my head around it a little bit and see how I might end up using this. What he was saying is basically you can go through this and let's say this is a, a track that we're working on. If you're working in arrangement view and fixing up your stuff and then you want to go back to the, the session view and uh, work with stuff as clips, you can decide that this here is going to become a clip and uh, you go consolidate time to new scene and uh, you do this. And then when you go back to it, you can tell it created a scene with these clips. And then if you want you, another scene to have, well, we can have all of this and uh, you do consolidate time to new scene. When you go to it, each of these, you can see they all have the clips from from the other one. So it's a great way to be able to get your stuff from arrangement view back into session view and uh, be able to work with with stuff in a whole bunch of ways. So uh, that's something I'll be trying out in the next little while. Let me know how you're using this in the comments if you are using this, <laughs> because uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to find some interesting ways that I can use this in my my in my music on a regular basis. So uh, yeah, it's uh, that's what it is. Consolidate time. No, what is, what is it called? Um, yeah, consolidate time to new scene. So that's, uh, that's the third tip. Number four is interesting. He was saying that Ableton devices, they will turn off if they're not being used, which is really interesting for live performance stuff. And uh, so because you can load up a whole bunch of devices on a bunch of tracks and we're not when you're not using that track, it doesn't matter how many effects you have on there. I gave it a little bit of a try with a few effects and they weren't turning off um, because I think the effects themselves with a whole bunch of delays and stuff, they were creating some sort of signal uh, themselves from one to the next or whatever, just from floor noise. But uh, it's an interesting way to do it where you can throw a bunch of effects if you're using the Ableton ones. If you're using third-party plugins, they apparently can't uh, send the signal from the plugin into Ableton to say, I'm not receiving any audio so just don't turn this on right now <laughs> so the external plugins won't work the same way but uh, the ableton devices if there's no audio going through uh, apparently turn off and they don't use up any cpu so it's sort of nice to be able to load up a whole bunch of them and not have to worry about uh your computer slowing slowing down or you don't have to be adding them as you go uh, you can set up a whole bunch of stuff right from the start and uh work from there all right, number five is going to be nice to make some interesting sounds. It's on the Echo device, and uh, I use this ducking a lot. And if you're not using ducking, you really, really should. Um, in, in a lot of cases where it the delay just gets to be a big mess, what the ducking will do, it's basically a side chain. If I was talking now, uh, it would bring the delay down while I'm talking and then bring the delay up once I'm done, when, once there's no signal going through. So it's sort of nice, it moves the incoming signal away from the delay, like it just separates them a little bit. And uh, so you just hit ducking here and go bring the threshold down or whatever. But what he mentioned on here is this wobble, which is interesting. And uh, I've just got a very, very plain
So if we take the, the echo off, just a very plain uh, drift preset. So once we hit the echo, you can sort of tell. So this is where we might throw in some of the ducking and just bring this. A lot of the time you have to bring it down quite a bit just to move it away a little bit. But anyways, without the wobble, just a normal preset. But if we turn on the wobble and we bring this percentage up, you can tell it's sort of moving around a little bit and morph here. It's a little bit strong, but it just adds a little bit of movement to your It adds a little bit of just a little imperfection to to make your sound a little bit more interesting. So uh, using this wobble, the the ducking, the noise on on here as well, you can play around with these and get what, whatever sound that uh, that you want. But that was a great uh, uh, a great reminder of a feature that's on there, sort of hidden be you know behind a, a different tab. And that's a, another thing in there. You really have to be looking through these tabs and see what's what's hidden behind something else because there are there's so many little things in Ableton that you can do that you never even realized and you know I'm constantly discovering some new little uh new little hidden gems that I can use in my tracks that that'll just make it sound a lot more interesting so anyways I hope these can help you out uh thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video